Hi. In our first uh, video in quarreling and fighting series of videos, we talked about a husband who uh, had come for counseling. He and his wife had fairly recently gotten into a very awful argument with each other, actually described it as probably one of the worst that they'd ever had in about 12 years of marriage. And um, when he was done explaining uh, and describing the story and the argument and uh, how bad it got and how hurtful it was, I, I, when he was done, I asked him a question. I said, well, why, why did you get angry and say those things to your wife? And he went on to explain. It was because the, she was arguing with him and saying things that weren't true, and, and he had to set the record straight. And uh, had she not been doing that, he wouldn't have been speaking badly, but he, uh, but nonetheless, he said, the reason why I did that was because uh, my wife, she was saying things that were outrageous, that were hurtful and harmful, and I had to speak the truth into that kind of a situation and try to set her straight. And he went through that scenario again, and I, as you'll remember, I said to him one more time, so why did you get so angry and annoyed and say those things? And he said the same thing. Basically, well, it's because of my wife. My, my wife was... Um, outrageous and um, I just couldn't let it stand and I got angry at her and uh, he and I at that point looked at Luke chapter 6 um, together and we did that in our first video where Jesus says in verse 45 the good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart and the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart for out of the overflow of his heart uh, his mouth speaks, and my client uh, understood right away that uh, two things were taking place. Number one, that he was uh, blaming his wife uh, for why he was acting and speaking um, sinfully and evilly, with evil words, and that he was clearly down in his heart, had a bad heart, and that's why he was doing it. He was blaming his wife uh, instead of blaming his own heart and what was going on down inside his heart. Jesus says, you got a bad heart, you're going to speak bad words. If you got a good heart, you're going to speak good words. And uh, we spent our first session looking over that in detail. Today, what I'd like to do is look at that conversation a little bit more clearly, and a little bit more specifically, a little bit more deeply. So imagine that you've got this husband and wife, or perhaps even think in terms of a recent quarrel and fight that you might have had with your wife, or your husband, or your kids. And uh, one starts, the other one reacts badly, and the other one reacts badly to that reaction, and it gets louder as this one reacts to that one, and this one reacts to that one, and this one reacts to that one. And, and you know, th this can become dangerous after a while. This, is, this, this could rise to levels of abuse, verbal abuse at least. Um, sometimes, in worst case scenarios, it turns out to be physical abuse. And that's horrible, and it's horrible and horrible. And steps have to be taken to prevent that from happening. And we're trying to take some steps right now, trying to understand why, why do I act and why do I react so badly? And today I want to ask the question, uh, why did the wife react so badly to her husband? He was saying things that she didn't like, but she reacted badly. And he was listening to her. And uh, he found himself reacting badly too. And so you have this... Um, you have action and reaction, and then you have action and reaction, and you have action and reaction, and vice versa. You're, one person begins to react to the other person's reaction. There's an initial action that produces a, a reaction, perhaps, and then that reaction, we find a similar reaction in the part of the wife. A husband reacts sinfully in that reaction situation as well, and it just escalates or spirals down out of control into awful kinds of situations. So why does, why did the wife or why did my client react badly to one another? Surely they were acting and talking, but a lot of what was really going on was reacting to what the other person said. Question that I would pose to you is, why do you act so badly when your wife is acting badly towards you? Or why, husband, do you react badly when your wife is reacting badly to you? Or why do you speak such bad things when your wife is speaking bad things to you? Or, uh, dad, why do you react badly when your kids are not obeying you and not doing what you want them to do? Why are you reacting badly to their disobedience? Or, mom, 
why are you reacting so badly and speaking so badly to your kids when they're disrespecting you and not obeying you when you've told them to do something four times? Why are you reacting so badly to their disobedience and their disrespect of you? Well, Jesus would uh, would say the same thing. It goes back to the root and the fruit. And what we oftentimes do in those, why do we act so badly if we were really honest with ourselves? What we're doing is, is coming up with a lot of excuses as to why reacting badly makes a lot of sense. Why did I react badly to my husband? Well, he was, he was lying. He wasn't telling the truth. He was exaggerating uh, what happened that morning and I reacted in, in a way of trying to set the record straight. The, the, he was lying and not being accurate and truthful. He might say, I reacted badly because she was disrespectful to me. You should have heard the things that she was saying to me. You should, it, it was awful. It's extremely disrespectful. That's why I reacted badly. Or um, uh, a, a husband might say, um, you know, in all the things I was trying to say, I could see very, very clearly that my wife wasn't listening to me. And so I reacted by getting louder because I'm trying to get her attention to understand the things I'm really trying to say. Why did I react badly? Because she wasn't listening to me or he wasn't listening, uh, listening to me. Those are all what we would call excuses for acting and reacting badly. Jesus says the reason why we act badly, the reason why we speak badly, listen carefully, and the reason why we react badly and the reason why we speak and react badly is not because the other person is mistreating me, speaking to me uh, wrongly, not listening. The reason why I act and speak badly and the reason why I react and speak badly in reaction is because of what's going on in my own heart. Remember now what uh, verse uh, 45 said. For out of the overflow of his heart, the mouth speaks. If the heart is good, a man will speak good and act good toward that wife, even if she's acting badly. Her acting badly is no excuse for him acting badly. If in a bad situation when your wife is disrespecting you and acting and talking badly, if you're relying on the Lord and praying and drawing near to him, he will help you to react by speaking what is good and by acting what is good, even when you're in a bad situation. You cannot, re you cannot blame your reactions, verbal or actions or otherwise, on the other person. Conversely, I would say to the wife, if I had an opportunity to do that, regarding uh, the wife or the husband who I was counseling, I would say to her, why, would, why did you react so badly to your husband time after time after time? And typically what I would hear as a professional counselor was because he's a jerk. He was acting like a jerk. He wasn't listening. He wasn't paying attention. He, he was speaking things that weren't true. And, and I had to set the record straight. But what is she doing there? She's saying, I acted badly and reacted badly because of him. But Jesus would say something extremely different, but very helpful to the wife if she was interested in learning and trying to do better. Jesus would say, no, out of the abundance of your heart, you acted and you reacted. And the reason why you acted and reacted badly to your husband verbally was because of what was going on in your own heart. When he said nasty things to you, the reason why you reacted not was be, reacted badly was not because he said nasty things, be, but be rather because of what was going on in your heart. Had you, when he was being nasty, drawn near to the Lord, relied on him, prayed to him, and gone to the throne of grace in your time of need, he would have been able to help you and would have helped you to act and talk well and good and constructively and kindly even if your husband is talking to you in a nasty way. See what Jesus is saying here? He's helping us to understand where our actions and our reactions and our, um, our, our verbiage really originates. It originates in our hearts. And when we're rationalizing and excusing and blaming the other person, we're missing what God wants us to understand. And we cannot grow and we will not mature. And our marriages will not get better they will actually get worse until we understand this. Now, 
Jesus, listen, listen to how, uh, how um, he gives us a metaphor in these other, other verses that help us to understand this a little bit more deeply. So let's look at verse 43. No good tree bears bad fruit, right? That's mathematical. One plus one equals two, two plus two equals four, and a good tree is going to bear good fruit. A good tree is not going to produce bad fruit. We know that. Agriculturally, we know that a bad tree is going to bear bad fruit. We know that. That's mathematical in terms of its predictability. Any of us who know agriculture in some way or another, we know that a good root is going to produce good fruit, and a bad root is going to produce bad fruit. Listen to this. Verse 44. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorn bushes. If you have a thorn bush and it's rooted in, in the roots are of the DNA in the roots is a thorn bush, you're not going to expect figs to come from that thorn bush. You're going to expect thorn bush. Uh, contrary, if you plant a fig tree and the DNA in that fig tree is figs, then when you're not going to expect apples to come from fig trees. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. You plant a fig tree, you're going to get figs. And by uh, looking at what you're getting, you, you see figs, you know down at the root that is a fig tree. You see thistles, you know down at the bottom it's a, a thistle bush, right? Jesus is giving us this mathematical, agricultural, absolute certainty that figs will grow figs, thistles will grow thistles, corn will grow corn, and pumpkin seeds are going to grow pumpkins. It's mathematical mathematically certainly true and that's what Jesus is saying if you're if you have an evil root if you have thistles in the root you're not going to produce figs you're going to produce thistles if you have a bad heart you're going to produce a bad you're going to say bad things you're going to speak bad things if you have a good heart you're going to have good things if you plant pumpkins you're going to get pumpkins if you have a good heart you're going to speak good things it's impossible to think that if you have a good heart you're going to say bad things or if you have a bad heart, you're going to say good things. Jesus is saying, no. Figs, figs, thistles, thistles, bad heart, bad things, good heart, good things. Now, this is very, very powerful, and I'll wrap it up with this. So, how can you and I and other wives and other husbands, how can we learn how to act, react, I should say, how can we learn to react well in these situations when things are not going well? When I am being mistreated, uh, uh, lied to, uh, when someone's angry at me, when someone's accusing me, uh, when someone's lying to me, when someone is arguing to me, when my environment like that is difficult and hard, how can I react in a way that uh, would be constructive and good and fruitful and honoring to God? Well, it depends on one thing and one thing only, and that is your heart. What we all have to learn how to do in that situation is when we're in that kind of a situation, and that happens often, it happens frequently, and always will until the day that we die, we're going to find ourselves in those relational sorts of conflicts. What we have to learn how to do early, in the first inning, in the second inning, noticing that I might be getting ramped up and um, getting into the quarrel, what we need to learn to do at that point is to pray. Draw near to the Lord. And that is your moment of need, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16 says. That's your moment of need. And what are we supposed to do when we find ourselves struggling in that area? And at that time, well, it says approach the throne of grace so that you can get help from God. So we need to learn to pray in those situations and get a good heart by trusting the Lord, not ourselves. Relying on the Lord, not ourselves. Put our confidence in him and not ourselves and approach him in prayer and to continue to pray and to continue to ask that he would draw near to you, give you grace and mercy, that you would accept the grace and mercy, that you would see the grace and mercy. And then guess what's going to come out of you? Mercy and grace, even to the other person who's being nasty to you. And there's a pretty good chance if you keep on doing that, that other person probably will calm down as well. That's the way it kind of works. Not always, but oftentimes. And we're not going to do it for that reason. But God does want us to be able to love and be merciful and gracious, even in those difficult places like when a husband and wife is quarreling. Why do we react badly? Because of our hearts. How can we learn to react well and good in those situations? Go back to your heart. 
draw near to God, he will draw near to you and he will empower you to speak things that are merciful, graceful, loving, and patient and calm. Try it. I promise you, in that situation, even though someone is talking and quarreling with you, if you pray and draw near to God and keep on praying and keep on drawing near in God, you will be able to respond very, very differently than the way the person's treating you. You'll be able to act well and you'll be able to react well as well. Okay, see you in video number three.